What is up, FA Nation? This is Kevin Tompkins here back with another Target Report bullet points for Week 10. We are already halfway through the NFL season, most of the way through the fantasy football regular season. A lot of actionable information to bring to you, to your fantasy leagues for that fantasy playoff push. So like and subscribe the video here on Fantasy Alarm if you like what we're doing here. And without further ado, we've got a lot to get into, so let's get right into it with Week 10's Target Report bullet points. We've been through an odyssey with Taysom Hill over the last six seasons. Is he a quarterback? Is he a running back? Tight end? He's a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. But what we do know that is over the last four weeks, Hill has averaged 18 fantasy points per game as fantasy's tight end two, with just 1.4 fewer fantasy points than Travis Kelsey. With everybody healthy in New Orleans, Juwan Johnson back, all the running backs, uh, it doesn't matter. Taysom Hill still has a sizable role on this New Orleans Saints team, especially in the red zone. After the elite fantasy tight end options, everybody is pretty much the same anyway. You're hoping for a touchdown every week when you start the Kate Ottens, when you start the Hunter Henrys. Taysom Hill saw his largest rush attempt share of his career, taking 42% of the team's week nine carries against the Chicago Bears. In three of the last four weeks, Hill has at least five targets. If he's passing for a touchdown, getting eight to 10 carries per game, and seeing a handful of targets, you've got to put him up as a mid-range tight end one in fantasy. We can revolt and say this is all fool's gold as we have in previous seasons, but with a body of work that's been pretty sustainable through multiple weeks, and with every player healthy in New Orleans, we've got new information and we must adjust. Keaton Mitchell's week nine started slow as he got his first carry in the second quarter against the Seahawks. But on just nine carries, he put up 134 rushing yards and a touchdown, plus eight missed tackles to finish his RB5 this week. Mitchell only saw 8% of routes, 17% of snaps, and 24% of the rushing attempts. And the Ravens, in a blowout script, kept Justice Hill out there for 64% of the snaps and 71% of routes per dropback. Most of Hill's work was later in the game as they kept him in to soak up carries, but it's a three-way backfield now with Gus Edwards, Hill, and Mitchell. But Mitchell could provide that juice and big playability that he's shown this past Sunday, and the Ravens can't keep him off the field going forward. I would hate to be the person who fails to take a massive swing on a potential league-winning running back because there are other running backs in the fold in Baltimore. Keaton Mitchell is a lesser bet than the Devon A-chain, that made earlier in the season, but now that it's coming up on the fantasy playoffs, the same kind of fantasy impact can be had with Mitchell, who is by far the most efficient back in Baltimore in Week 9. Mitchell has been hyped up by head coach John Harbaugh and the Ravens since training camp and hit home run after home run in Week 9. I doubt Gus Edwards just goes away as the bigger and more efficient back of the trio. Justice Hill will still also be involved, but Mitchell will be the waiver wire ad of the week. That said, Mitchell still has work to do. Having this kind of blow-up game doesn't automatically allocate 40 to 50% of the rushing attempts going forward for Mitchell. He has a lot of work to do to carve out a role, and it's up to him to capitalize. But getting the foot in the door is vitally important as well. We love to swing aggressively on potential upside, but Mitchell is a pretty volatile bet to make with a lot of your fab budget. That said, I'm 100% on board with making that bet on Mitchell because you don't know how many more chances you're going to get the rest of the season with this particular kind of high upside swing at the running back position on a great Ravens offense with the third highest run rate in the NFL after nine weeks. I doubt you can plug Mitchell into your lineup next week, but I'm trying to see the forest through the trees because the situation in Baltimore is super conducive to fantasy success. The environment is excellent for fostering growth in the running back's role, especially if Mitchell retains huge efficiency. If you're holding on to your budget and looking for a guy to stash, he could be the guy on an elite Ravens offense that turns into an eventual league winner, unlike the Daryl Hendersons, Devin Singletary's, and Julio McLaughlin's of the world that we've picked up in the past few weeks. The one thing we don't talk about enough with adding players to your roster that may or may not turn into anything is that you get to keep them on a winning roster to add to your depth. You're also keeping that player off of your opponent's roster. When gearing up for the fantasy playoffs, we want as many possible home run swings on your bench as possible because you never know when injury strikes. And indeed, with more bye weeks coming up here in the next three to four weeks, having those type of options on your bench is invaluable. Conversely, if you need wins on the roster in the middle of the pack, if you're fighting for a playoff spot, Mitchell may not be the best fit where you can't exactly afford to wait on a player who may not get the role right away. 
Mitchell right now is the player with a two to three week potential to grow his role. Still though, he offers massive, massive contingent value in the interim because if Edwards or Hill get hurt, the timeline accelerates for Mitchell. I'm thinking of it like Texas Hold'em where after the flop, I have Jack 10 of hearts and the flop comes nine of hearts, queen of spades, deuce of hearts. I have a ton of outs toward hitting the nuts, which is the flush. Whether that's coaches deciding we want this guy in the field next week, him growing his role over time, or even an injury forcing the hand with Mitchell getting more work. I want to be in on the ground floor with Mitchell because those type of bets may not hit every single time, but when they do, they hit significantly. You can't take the fab dollars back home with you after the season, so you've got to make a stand and use them while you can, and I am definitely on board with using those fab dollars on Keaton Mitchell.